Welcome to the first of a six-part series from Chapter 3. Chapter 3 is about the biosphere, and it's really the basics when it comes to ecology. Our ecology chapters are 3, 4, 5, and 6. And Chapter 3 really lays the foundation of the basics. So in Chapter 3, you're going to learn about stuff like, obviously, what is the biosphere? What's the difference between uh, consumers and producers? And you're going to learn about the biogeochemical cycles, such as the water cycle, the carbon cycle. And then finally, we're going to talk about how do limiting nutrients affect these different types of environment. So let's get started with what is the biosphere. Before we get to study that, we really want to know what is ecology. And as you can see here, we have our def definition of ecology. Fact. Ecology is the study of how organisms interact with each other and their surroundings. And really what we're talking about is how do the biotic factors, and if you can remember the bio, that simply means life, how do the living things such as plants, animals, insects, bacteria, how do they interact with each other? And just as importantly, how do they interact with the abiotic factors? The A part means negative or anti, so these are the non-living things. Think of water, rocks, the weather, etc. So how do all the non-living things and living things interact? That's what ecology is about. Okay, so what's our definition of the biosphere? If you look at here in biosphere, it's kind of telling you what's going on. Bio refers to life. And then obviously sphere would be like our planet. So if you put the words together, this is the living planet. In other words, the parts of Earth where life exists. Whoa. Now it has a range. It goes almost seven miles below the surface. Think about where those volcanic vents are at the very deepest part of the ocean. And you can actually find living things approximately five miles up in the air. All right, so that area from way up in the atmosphere to way down below the surface, everywhere in between there is where we find life. And that is what the biosphere is. Okay, really basic stuff so far. All right, levels of organization. We went over this back in Chapter 1, uh, very, very basics of, of biology. And we can start with molecules move up to cells, cells become tissues, tissues become organs, organs become systems, systems become organisms, and then you get to the species level. All right, so these are the levels of organization that you want to know for this chapter. All right, species, definition we came straight out of our evolution stuff. A species is defined as a group of organisms that can breed and produce fertile offspring. All right. Next up is a population. This is a group of organisms from the same species living in the general area. All right, so think of like you're at a park. All the squirrels in that park is a population of squirrels. The community is groups of different populations living in the area. So let's think about that park. In the park, you're going to find squirrels. You're also going to find hawks. You'll probably find robins. You're going to find trees, you're going to find grass, and you're going to find the humans that come to visit there. Those are different populations, and put them together, that's the community. Now, the ecosystem are all of the community, or in other words, all the organisms, so it's the community along with the environment. And what we're talking about in the environment would be all of those abiotic factors. Okay, so let's go back to that park. You've got your community, which would be like the robins, the hawks, rabbits, squirrels, people, etc. And then you throw in the dirt, the rocks, the air. Maybe there's a pond or a lake in this park. Together, that's the ecosystem. Now, a biome is simply a group of ecosystems that have the same climate and similar dominant communities. Okay, examples of these would be like uh, a desert. Uh, think of like the African savanna, where the lions and giraffes would be. Uh, in central United States, you have grasslands. Uh, some other choices of a biome would be a tropical rainforest, TRF for short. You know, uh, we don't really go over that too much in details because that's not part of our Indiana standards. But if you go towards the back of Chapter 3, uh, actually maybe it's more towards Chapter 4. I don't remember off the top of my head. There will be more detail on those biomes. And then finally, the biosphere, which is where all of the life occurs. So 
All of these things are in compass, are part of the biosphere. Okay? All right, let's clear that. We'll move on to the next one. All right, so here we've got a graphic that simply just explains what we just went over. Okay? So here's your individual. Okay? In this case, it's an elk. Okay? So this is an individual of the species. So this is the elk species. Okay, so here we've got a bunch of elk in the same place. They can actually breed, produce fertile offspring. They're all the same individuals. So there's your population. Now you add your elk with the moose, the trees. Um, here's uh, a bobcat, an owl, and a, uh, and a rabbit. Those are all different populations. That's the community. Now you add in all the living things plus the non-living things like the air, the mountains, and the pond over here. That's your ecosystem. Now this would be like a, a, a taiga or a carnivorous forest. That would be a, bi a biome that you'd find up here in northern Canada. So that's a type of biome. And then obviously the biosphere, the entire planet. You know, the, the, all these layers, they just get bigger and bigger. Pretty basic stuff, all right? So... If you go back to the previous slide where there's all those colored words, these are things you need to know to be able to do well on the test and the quizzes. All right. Okay, we got one more slide to go in this episode. Okay, so how do we study ecology? Well, it's really pretty basic. And just remember OEM. You know, just remember, let's try a different color here. OEM. Observing, you just go out in nature. And you observe it, and you write down what you got. Think of like what Charles Darwin did. He'd walk around the Galapagos Island. He'd write down all the stuff, and that would be essentially his data. You can run experiments. You can do artificial environments inside a lab situation. That happens all the time. Or you can actually conduct it out in nature in the natural environment. Scientists do that too. All right, so remember, when you experiment, you're trying to collect data. Data is the observations and or uh, hard data such as numbers that would you know your measurements that are going to be used to basically see if your hypothesis was correct or not and then finally we can do some modeling these are used because a lot of our things whoops let me respell this a lot of the things that we study in ecology are done on such a grand scale I mean if you talk about like a biome you're talking hundreds of thousands of square miles you're going to have a hard time bringing that into the lab just because of the size. So we're going to take our data from our smaller experiments, and we're going to be used, pretty much be able to use that uh, as a framework to create mathematical formulas. And we really use these models to help us make predictions. Okay, uh, We see this in when we're doing weather forecasts. They have mathematical and computer models to help predict how the weather is going to be. And we are creating... Uh, mathematical models to basically predict what's the effect of climate change on all of these different environments out there in, in the world. All right, so modeling is probably one of the most important ways, and the modeling is going to be built upon experimentation because we use this data to create the formulas, and from these formulas, then we'll be able to predict. Okay, that's going to wrap up this first episode. We got five more to go in this chapter. So until the next time, we're going to catch you on that flip side.